Hello, everybody, and welcome to this original tag video. It's an original tag video by me. I have thought of making a tag video. All right, so this tag video is, I think I'm going to call it, What is Your Poetry Tag? Sound shit. I don't know. Um... I'll work on that. But so here are the questions. First, do you prefer metaphor or simile? If you saw my metaphor rant the other day, you probably already know my answer to this, but I do prefer simile just because um, I think it grounds the poetry in realism and um, makes it more accessible for people. And I don't mean like necessarily dumbing it down, but I feel like when people are doing metaphor over metaphor over metaphor, pretty soon the thing gets so fucking murky, you have no idea what the fuck anyone's talking about. Um, and is this more of a beef with me and how people use metaphor? Probably, but um, let's just keep it safe and keep it simple and keep it simile. Oh, that's a fun little thing that I could put on a coffee cup. Oh, speaking of, question two. What is the most important element in a poem for you? Um, form or structure? Um, meaning and feeling? or the sound of a poem, like alliteration, etc. And you can't say all of them, okay? You have to pick one. Like, what is the thing that when you are reading a poem or looking for a poem or looking at a poem, what is the thing that you are hoping to find when you sit down with that poem? For me, um, it's obviously um, meaning or feeling. Um, I like to know that the poet has something to fucking say, um, before I sit down. Like, I, I like to know that the things that I'm going to be reading are fucking thought out, that it's not just word vomit on a page or a metaphor orgy or anything like that. Like that there is something with meat in it. There's something that you could like grab onto and chew up kind of thing. Question three, what is your favorite school or movement in poetry? Like um, anything from Dada to surrealism to realism to um, Black Mountain to um, the beats, like anything like that. <clears throat> and my answer to this um, I guess would technically be meat poetry, um, but more than that, it is the poems that kind of came out of California, um, southern and northern, and in around the 60s and 70s. Like, that is the stuff that I lean on probably more than anything else. Um, it, to me, it's just very irreverent and, um, real and visceral more so than, um, any other stuff I've read. And, um, yeah, so that would be my answer for that. Question four, um, since we see the world through a poet's eyes, does a poet have to live an interesting life for you to enjoy their poetry? Um, I think so. And one of the biggest uh, neon billboards for this is kind of what's going on now. Um, there's a lot of like Insta poetry, and we'll talk about that in a second too. There's a lot of Insta poetry out there um, written by people who have never really from what it seems have never had a hard day in their fucking life. And, um, the worst thing that might've happened is, I don't know. I don't want to fucking start like calling people out, but it doesn't seem like the people are very interesting. 
um, a lot of the poetry sounds exactly the same. Like you could take any poem and put it in front of anybody and no one would be able to tell who wrote what and the whole deal. Um, so I think the poet's life and how they live is just as important as the poetry they write. And, um, like some examples of this, I guess, I think would be, um, like, I think a lot of people know about the life of Sylvia Plath. I think more people know about her life than they know about her actual poetry. I think people actually probably know more about Edgar Allan Poe than they know about his poetry. Like, just any random person on the street. Um, and I don't think this is necessarily a fame thing. I think this is um, just what they have heard of these people kind of thing. How does geography play into the poets you like, or does it at all? And what this means is, like, are there poets that you will... Like, if you know nothing about the poet, but you see... Um, oh, this poet's from Jamaica. Like, I'm going to read that because I want to eat that up. I want to see what that's like. Or um, this poet is from China, from whatever dynasty. Like, I'll, I'll eat that up and see what that's like kind of thing. Like, is there anything like that? And for me, a lot of my favorite poets are from Los Angeles um, in the Southern California area. And... Maybe that is a silly bias for me to have, but um, I like being able to read stuff that I know. And some of you might go, well, that's not really expanding your mind. And I know that's not very mind expanding or anything like that. Um, but um, I have kind of come into some poets from Canada that I've been kind of digging a little bit in the Midwest. I don't really know, because when I was younger, a lot of the poetry I read was um, like British, like old English poetry. Although I will say this, and I was reading this, and if you saw this video yesterday, um, there were these um, Russian poets that were fucking hysterical. And, um, I might really start digging on that because the the dark humor in it um, really spoke to me a bunch. Whitman said, to have great poets, there must be great audiences. Bukowski said, to have great audiences, you need great poets. And then I said, unless you have great places for these two to meet, it doesn't matter. So what's your take on this? My take on this is... I wouldn't say grim necessarily, but I've been lately really getting worked up over the cost of like real estate or building rents um, as opposed to the rate of inflation over the last however many years. And um, an example of this is when I was in high school, there were tons of um, like all ages clubs, um, tons of coffee shops that would allow like readings and music being played and all this other stuff that were like independently owned, not corporate chains or anything like that. And there were just tons of places you can go to find the stuff that you're into. Um, and now, and I, you guys are like, well, it's the internet, you stupid fuck. And like, I understand that. And um, the rise of the internet has um, made it to where a lot of people don't go out as much as they used to because they could have everything they want at home, which is fine. Um, but I feel like between that and people not being able to make enough money, to have venues like this, um, it keeps like people apart. Like it keeps the poet from the audience and all this other stuff. But then I know there's another side of the coin that's like, well, 
do you know how many people could be seen on TikTok and Instagram and on YouTube and all this stuff? And yeah, you probably like eventually, especially on YouTube, can reach more people than you could in one sitting at a place. But like on TikTok and Instagram, it's like, like you're here and you're there and you're here and you're there. And I don't know if, no matter how great you are, I don't know if the audience, if that place is good enough to where those two intersect um, in a way. So what's your take on that? Next question. Who do you think has advanced poetry the most? And when I wrote this question, I had a completely different answer. And um, I've been thinking about it. And it's weird because, like, I think Poe did a lot for American poetry, especially in the spooky gothic sphere, okay? And... I mean, I'm pretty sure that in schools and shit like that, like high school and even junior high probably, he's still being taught. Like, with the exception of Shakespeare, like, I don't know if there's another poet who is constantly being taught like that. But originally, I was thinking um, Whitman just for, like bringing poetry to the people, to the common folk, to be able to um, access the poetry and stuff like that. Um, but then, again, um, T.S. Eliot kind of took everything Whitman did and fucked it up. And I think for the last however fucking many years, 70 hundred years almost um, poets have been trying to unfuck what Eliot fucked I as much as I don't want to say this I think I would have to say Ginsburg not so much his writing as much as his um, kind of cheerleading for others um, and it, I mean, when I was a kid in the 80s, I remember, like, hearing, oh, Ginsburg, blah, 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 or Ginsburg's going to be on TV talking about, blah, 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 blah. you know, like, I recognized him and knew who he was. I had no fucking idea what he ever did, but um, he was kind of like a household name kind of thing. So... Um, I think maybe him. I don't know. Like, wh what do you think about that? And then the last question here. Um, since the rise of the moderns and freeform verse over the last 50 years, and more currently, the rise of Insta poetry, which is probably on a downswing already. I'm not 100% on that. I'm just assuming. What movements or, um, like, what do you think the future of poetry holds like what do you think is next and um i was thinking really hard about this and i think honestly in the next 50 years i think there's going to be like a fucking like rebellion against technology whereas um since insta poetry is so short and shallow that there's going to be a lot of longer um, pieces but I don't think the internet is going to be the place for it and um, especially with just the world we're living in now I honestly think to make it more organic um, what we're going to see is people like writing their poetry in blood, writing their poetry in shit, pissing, like mixing urine with ink or blood with ink, and like writing poems like in public places, um, 
more of like a street art like rebellion against the norm um because you can't have something this trite and not have and have it be really fucking popular and not have a hard rebellion against it like it's just human fucking nature like I mean, you could go with the 70s prog rock and arena rock to fucking punk rock. Like, what is the exact opposite of really skilled musicians playing in giant arenas? Um, people who don't know how to play instruments playing in, like, dive bars. Like, there's there's always... And then, like, you had, like, the big glam scene and, like, dudes with, like, super long, like putting more time in themselves than the girls that would come see him play kind of thing. And then you turn to grunge. Like, I'm just going to wear a flannel and shop at a thrift store. Like, um, you can't have something so embedded into the culture and then not have an exact rebellion of it. So however that's going to be, that's where I see it going. Um, am I going to take part in the shit, blood, piss, spit, um, poetry graffiti that will be the future um probably not but um i fully support it i fully support it uh maybe i will i don't know we'll see we'll see how i'm feeling when that happens um so what do you think the future holds um and then tag whoever you want so um, i'm gonna tag a bunch of people here just to get this thing off the ground so um, Aaron Facer, um, Burton Shanapa Storytime, Steve Donahue, Steve, 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 um, a new channel, The Poets Artifacts, go show him some love, um, Old Blue Chapter and Verse, some books I'm not reading, um, K Spivey, Remembered Reads, Jay Shea, uh, The Caffeinated Bookworm, Bookish, and finally, Zoe B, um, who's started the hundred poem challenge thing that um, I'm taking part in right now. So, um, and if I didn't tag you, do it anyway. You're tagged. Um, so I hope this was fun and I look forward to hearing your answers. Bye-bye.